All right, welcome back here to Jack Butcher Sports Arena. This is uh, Travis Madison, and uh, Mike DeCourcy's taking a back seat. We've got a special guest this evening as we are still in the process of, uh, of watching a, a really a nice ceremony that uh, Lagodi High School is putting on to honor their, uh, their uh, school's 1,000-point scores, both on the boys' and girls' side, and even uh, some of those folks that led into the uh, – uh, prior to the consolidation with St. John's uh, as well. So it's a very nice ceremony. Coach Butcher and uh, Principal John Mullen have been working on this for some time. So we're still in the process of that. And I've got a special guest tonight who uh, is uh, somebody very special to me. And uh, he actually is in, a, uh, he's in a, uh, kind of a new endeavor. He's done the last couple of years with a friend of his from Jasper. But it's uh, former uh, Jasper head coach and Washington Catholic head coach uh, Ken Schulteis. And uh, he's got... Uh, He's got a little, bo- a little bit of cheering interest tonight here. His son Josh is an assistant coach for uh, for Coach Hughes in the Barry Vikings in his first year helping out with the program. But, Coach, it's good to have you here. Well, it's great to be here. And a special night, not only uh, with with the ceremony that's going on with these 1,000-point career scores for Lagodi High School and Coach Butcher out there. Of course, I had many battles with Coach. And, yeah. uh, when I was at Washington Catholic, I was just thinking, we we beat them for the first time in Lagodi uh, Lions Arena in the den here and won the conference championship at the same time. Yeah. So so that was a great memory. But uh, it's a big night because it's the Bar Eve. Lagodi, uh, they're tossing up the ball again in what has been just a great rivalry for decades. And, I mean, obviously you're no stranger to rivalries yourself. Obviously growing up there in Jasper, the big rivalry for you guys for a lot of years was probably Southridge. And then yeah. obviously when you were at uh, – you were at WC. Look at, I think Jeff Doyle's being yeah. announced now. The principal and Barry fans are making sure he feels welcome by them tonight. And uh, so I knew uh, Jeff's talked about this. It's a, it's a neat, uh, neat honor for him. And as he is nearing his, uh, I'm going to tell him this when I talk to him later on. Almost, uh, I think this year's the 25th anniversary of us upsetting Jeff and his uh, in his uh, 1989 team that was very good. So I, I always remind him that this is 25 years, and then it really makes us feel old. But uh, it was a great game, and yeah. they were a great team, yes. and we. We're the underdogs, but that night we got the job yeah. done. That was a great victory, and he was just a great player. Yeah. But but even better than that, Travis, uh, he was he's a great individual. He was one of those guys that as a, a coach, as an opponent, you just appreciated the way he played and the way he carried himself on the court. Definitely, definitely. Well, that's one thing I know uh, you, we've talked about this, and, and Jeff and I obviously competed against each other as did I, as I did with a lot of the kids here from Lagodi, and uh, probably probably now some of my closest acquaintances because I think you know obviously you battle each other, but you find out when you get out of here and you and you stop competing against each other, you have so much in common, and you and uh, again we had so much respect for each other. It didn't mean we didn't want to beat each other's brains out, but you did have a lot of respect for the way that they went about things, and and probably some of the some of the, the folks that I run around with more now are guys that I competed against and or. Um, uh, played against in high school and uh, just found out when we got out that uh, you put those rivalries aside and you uh, and you really have a lot in common but uh, kind of speak a little bit coach to what your venture now obviously you uh, you've uh, you've been out of coaching for a little bit of time even though I don't think you've ever really gotten out of coaching because you've obviously uh, worked with the uh, work with your kids and things like that and uh, and uh, you, but now you're in a venture where you have a weekly show yeah we I've uh, a friend of mine uh, Joe Milligan out of the Jasper area we grew up together and and uh, after my time at Memorial, uh, looking at how I was going to go move forward with things, I had been in insurance, obviously coaching. I've never left coaching, whether I'm working with individuals or family members, or and, and I always leave that door open to possibly do it again. But we started a show about a year ago called the Coach K and Joe Show, and uh, we are doing it via the Internet, which means we not only get the local area, but we get the whole country and Travis, the whole world. Yeah. So that's the great thing about yeah. the internet. We started the show, and when we started it last year, we said if we get a hundred people listening, uh, that'd be a hundred crazy people. <laughs> and as we, after a couple shows, uh, our numbers were climbing to two thousand, three thousand. Uh, some of our shows, which are both live and podcast, uh, have had as many as six or seven thousand wow. listeners, and they do cover the country, and, and we probably have men in the military and, and women in the military overseas who want to hear about things back in southern Indiana. But, but our format is not just local, although we always talk about the local area, southern Indiana, Indianapolis hoops. We have contributors that come on and talk about them. We do also the tri-state. We do national, uh, both pro sports, college sports. Of course, the Big Ten is big and the yeah. SEC 
uh, and then, of course, the high school sports. So we try over a two-hour period on Friday from uh, 10 Eastern to 12 noon and 9 Central. We try to run the gamut, some of its opinions, <laughs> uh, some of its just smart stuff by oh, Coach yeah. K. Yeah. But we've had some great guests. We've had Don Fisher, Bobby Leonard. We've had Dane Five, assistant at Michigan State, Michael Lewis, assistant at Butler. Uh, we've had a number of coaches. We've had professional players, of course, uh, have a relationship with Scott Rowland. He's been on the show. And really what has been interesting for me is that the people we have contacted, whether they are on the professional level, uh, high school, college level, they have been more than gracious to come on and have actually enjoyed their time. We have members of the Big Ten Network that come on, Tom Dienert. Uh, has been on many times, and they're interested in coming back. What, what we really want to get out of our format as we go forward, and, it, and it's starting to happen a little more each week, is we want to get audience participation. Sure. Their opinions matter. They, yeah. You know, sometimes the fan in the stands, the guy watching at home, the gal watching at home, they know as much as sometimes the coach on the floor or the player playing it because they can see the game differently and they have a different perspective that's yeah. a little bit wider. So sure. their opinions matter, and we enjoy having them. And, and obviously they can go to the CoachKandJoeShow.com. That's how you can access the show. You can call the show. You can text the show. Uh, I give my direct text line, which is 812-480-9449. And if you text me, I will talk about it. And it doesn't matter if you're uh, good, bad, or ugly to me. <laughs> we will talk about it. We just ask you to keep it a little clean. Yeah, exactly. I know. I, I listen a lot. Of, sometimes I'll listen live over my lunch hour, and a lot of times I'll listen to the podcast. And I know, actually, I know there's a lot of folks even uh, that I uh, that we talk to even in, uh, in in the bar, even in Lagodi area that that are that are faithful listeners, either at the workplace or or from home or via the podcast. So I know around our area, there's a lot of folks that really enjoy a lot of the things you bring to the table, and obviously. You, uh, I know you run it seasonally, but I know you cover the gamut as far as uh, sports and, and, and different things that are going on, and, you know, around there. And it's a, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely working for you guys. And I know there's a lot of folks that enjoy it, so that's that's, that's a neat thing. And what what are what do you guys think as far as uh, you happy where it's at one day a week, or do you think it's something you guys see uh, branching out or doing anything different? Or well, I think at this point, uh, one day works the best in the format because of the podcast. We talked about going to a couple days a week. Uh, you, you, you know, you want to have a quality show. Sure. And, and that's, for those who haven't listened to the show, if you just want to tune in and, and get on the old coach from WC or Jasper, uh, you're welcome to do that. But I think you'll find that it's a quality show from the way it's introduced to the time we're on, to the guests we have, to the questions we ask. And we don't just say, what do you think about the game tonight or, or how many points do you have to score? We want to get in depth. We want to talk to them about how they feel. Uh, when they're coaching and what led them there or, or when they're playing or, or the perspective of their family or, or how did things change in the locker room. And I think one of the things that has helped me is I've grown up around sports, I've grown up around coaching, I've been in it, uh, the players' aspect. I do understand that. I've had the highs of the highs, Travis, and I've had the lows of the lows. So <laughs> I all, do yeah. understand the feelings that they go through, and I think that a lot of our coaches and the players that come on appreciate that and respect that because they know I'm not out to throw them under the bus, but they know I will ask the tough question. Sure. Kind of speak to this rivalry. Obviously, you, uh, you're you very familiar with the Bar Reeve Lagodi rivalry. Like you mentioned, you started your career out at WC and and uh, obviously started your career out having to battle my older brother as, as, a, as, a young, <laughs> as a young teenager, but obviously you're very familiar with this area. And again, I know you have a lot of fond memories. We've shared, we've shared many stories of of the uh, the early years of your career there, and then obviously even as you went on to Jasper, I know you faced both these squads on different occasions, some in regular season and some for big tournament wins for you as well. Um, and I've, I know you made it back last year to the uh, to the uh, debacle there at, at Bar Reeve where the uh, the superintendent didn't have enough mops for the floor, and we had two slippages at the end of the game where we couldn't get a last shot off. But I guess kind of speak to me. Obviously, you've you've been around the state. You watch different types of basketball. Obviously, we're, we're I, we talk about it all the time how incredibly blessed our kids are and. To, to, to play at a school in, a, in, a, in, a, in an area where it really matters, like like really, really, it's a throwback to where maybe the basketball was 20, 30 years ago in the state of Indiana. Oh, still here. I mean, for those of you listening on the radio, if you could just be here and see this crowd, it's just, it's outstanding. It, it makes me want to be down on that sideline and, and be in coaching right now because as much as we hear people talk about the crowds are down, 
the enthusiasm's down. It's not down here. It's not at Lagodi. It's not at Bar Eve. It's not in these schools in this local area. And that's the great thing about starting at WC and battling Bar Eve and battling Lagodi. And, and even though at times on the sideline or in the paper it sounded like I didn't appreciate it or didn't respect it or I was the enemy, I enjoyed every second. And I have such great respect for these schools and these communities. And when my son had the opportunity to teach at Bar Eve and, and help out with Coach Hughes' staff, I, I couldn't think of a better place that he could be to, to learn what community's about, Travis, to learn what commitment's about, and the appreciation for education and athletics. This is tremendous. This crowd is tremendous. I drove up here with Brian McAtee, a former player of mine at Washington Catholic. We talked about how we hope our kids as they come through, have the opportunity to experience these types of atmospheres. Sure, and I, and I know that's one thing we talk about all the time, and as, as obviously it's, it's been uh, 20-some years since, since you played, but it obviously there's, those are things that, that really, uh, not that it's your crowning achievement in life, but they are a lot of fond memories, and you have a lot of, uh, and of course Brian and I grew up and played together, and as did a, a few other kids, we had a very close relationship, had the opportunity to play with one of my brothers, and those are, just, those are memories you kind of keep with you forever, and and obviously we had a lot of good ones and some not so good ones, but uh, but again, it, it is a special thing. And I know even as superintendent, as principal before, I always tried to talk to the young ladies and young men that we have that, that go to school there, whether they're participating in athletics or anything, is they're very blessed to have a community that does back them in whatever they choose to do. And it's not necessarily that way everywhere, but I know ever since I've been here and even even from afar as a, as a competitor against Bar Reeve and even Lagoda, you, you, you just... Uh, you, you appreciate that a lot, and, and you hope these kids do as well. And I think a lot of them do. They do appreciate the, the opportunities that they get, but also the, the community support that they get. So, uh, well, Coach, I appreciate you coming on with us tonight. I, um, I'm sure uh, I'm sure we'll see you around many games here and there. I know you've uh, you made the trip up a couple of different times, and, and uh, you've got a young you got a young one still in school. You got a uh, little bit a little bit about your family. Janet is uh, is kind of running the show down there. She's got her own business there in uh, in Evansville, and Edward D. Jones' business there right off of. Uh, Lord Express way. Yeah, she's a financial advisor for Edward D. Jones, and my youngest son, Scott, is a, still a seventh grader. Uh, wanted to bring him along, but he had a school commitment. Uh, but, you, you know, one thing that, that I want to say to the communities uh, of Barry, Montgomery, and, and Candleburg, and, and of course, Lagodi, you don't understand how special it is. And my son, my oldest son, Josh, has said many times to me, Dad, I understand what you were talking about when we go to these games and see these crowds and see the enthusiasm. He said, I, I didn't realize what you're talking about. And there's a young man that played football at Evansville Memorial. They went to the state final game, uh, played basketball for a couple years. It's, it's just different, and you should be very proud of it. And, Travis, uh, all of you at, at Bar Eve uh, have just done a great job in the community and with the school system. We appreciate it. Well, Coach, thanks for coming on tonight and continued success with the uh, Coach K and Joe show. I know we'll, uh, we'll keep listening and uh, – and keep uh, learning more each and every week from you guys. So Fridays, 10 o'clock Eastern, CoachKandJoeShow.com. And if you don't like what I said, be sure to let me know. <laughs> that sounds good. Hey, I appreciate it. And we'll send it back to the station for a quick two-minute timeout. When we come back, we've got 